The Puffin Foundation brings artists into local schools as well. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Working with kids and doing educational activities, I do consider that an art form and certainly a way that art can evolve out and hopefully have an impact on society in a, in a positive way. What we're going to do tonight is turn this thing on and what I'm going to do is put special lights on here cool. and so it should attract moths and butterflies cool. and other insects too. So what I thought we could work on today is maybe decorating this a little bit with paint with some different <laughs> insect images along the wings because what do what do butterfly wings usually look like? For me, How about in the back? I've always done this kind of work. Since I was a kid, I've always uh, been the guy that was out catching frogs and catching salamanders and bringing fish in, setting up tanks and breeding things, and um, also creating art and creating like a naturalist journal as a child and things like that, and growing up out in the woods. So it was very natural for me to have that connection with nature and then to want to study it, um, both through art and through science. As far as being an artist or particularly a biologist, I'm actually um, studying now to be both. So I'm working on a, a dual degree, a dual doctorate in both. Spider, maybe? My primary yeah. field of scientific research deals with amphibian malformations and the occurrence of deformities among wild populations, combined with the fact that amphibians globally appear to be declining. Um, so that's kind of my field, and I do a lot of work that relates to amphibians. Uh, they're very, very important environmental indicators. They predate the dinosaurs by millions of years. And something that we're doing is making them disappear really fast. What it is, it's a high resolution scan. It's about an 8,000 DPI scan of living tadpoles that were collected as part of a scientific survey looking at the ratio of deformities. And when you first look at it, it's kind of beautiful and subtle and a little chaotic because of all the kind of things going on in the background and stuff like that. But then the more you kind of study the specimens, you start to realize that they're not just happy tadpoles. Unfortunately, they've got inflammation throughout their tissue. Parasites are burrowing all over them. So it's kind of um, seductive in a way, trying to draw people in but tell them a bit of a story. So it's a kind of atrocity attraction in a strange way. Brandon Ballinger, I think, combines, for me, the, the best of both the science element of ecological art and the aesthetic element. It's the kind of work that, that stimulates critical thinking. We're not doing well as a species. This relates to some of the other works in this series. Oftentimes we think of environmental issues being somewhere out here. We think of, I don't know, a rare canary purple polka dotted snail in Sri Lanka that needs to be saved. Well, sure, they need to be saved too, but the environment is actually us as well. We are part of nature. We are part of the environment. Um, the blood works in the exhibition. Those are kind of a real confrontation for me to look at what environmentally is going on inside of myself. Being born after the Industrial Revolution, we all have probably over 100 chemicals that come from industry. Um, strontium, lead, cadmium, mercury, all of these are a part of us and they're changing our life. They're changing how long we will live, uh, they're changing IQ rates in some cases, the sex of our children. I wanted to delve in very deeply into the subject and that's why um, they're kind of giant kind of fingerprints made out of my blood. Ouch, I hate needles and blood, I'm a biologist too, but I have always hated blood and but that's also, I wanted to find out what was in my own blood. He's also taken concentrations of dioxin and PCBs from the Hudson River sludge, a product of the uh, pollution from General Electric, and is able to concentrate that, distill that down and create a drawing medium. It's the kind of thing, it's like watching a um, oil slick on a puddle after a, a spring rain. There's a beauty to it, but what's behind it is uh, uh, peril to the species. So his combination of both the aesthetics and the and the message is, is unusual. I don't know, the weather's been a little wacky. We might not have very many insects, but I'm hoping. Right, we have a couple of little insects. Maybe what we can do... So it really is a collaboration the between the students, myself, the public, everybody that kind of works on it and comes out and views the insects at night, but also the insects themselves. They kind of 
draw and paint all over the surface with pheromones. And these pheromones attract more and more insects. So these pheromones often have colors and they just leave various debris and lay eggs on them. And so this whole kind of residual, kind of what I call uh, arthropod expressionism, uh, really starts to grow and change over time. <laughs> That looks great. Just add some. Artists that are dealing with environmental and ecological issues, um, it's often heavy stuff. And art is not just something to put over your sofa necessarily. Art can be lots of things.